Welcome to another episode of Creative Leaders Unplugged, a podcast brought to you by Future Skills Academy. I'm Morgan here with Arna, and today we're talking to Junko Mori, an artist, a gardener, a mom. <laughs> she makes spiky things. I think this episode is really good for. Well, interested in first of all art, obviously, but also art, definitely. So, yeah, but also interested in sort of the the the, the kind of the the, the overlap the 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 connection between all the different things we do as human beings to come up with solutions, you know? So mm -hmm. we're, yeah, so I got a little overexcited. You can tell if you listen to the podcast, I, I'm started. To, I'm starting to ramble and my brain goes like, where's this going? I don't know. Help me. <laughs> so I, I actually ask you to help me at one point, which I meant because like, I don't, I, there's something, I can't grasp it. There's something there and I can't, I can't put it into words, but there is, it, it has something to do with this fact that, if you are, if you're, if you, if you go through a scientific process, basically her art has a lot of science kind of in, 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 in a lot of overlap. It. Yeah. Right. So the scientific process, the, 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 the process that an artist works with, we as, 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 as designers, as innovators, as whatever, we are all using basically the same kind of um, muscle, if you will, or the, mm -hmm. the same mindset maybe even better of trial and error you know and i love her you know that kind of the, the repetitive actions and you know the, you know making little mistakes and yeah. that builds on each other and by the way my dog is here now during the during this podcast and he wants to also i don't know if you can hear him but i really couldn't hear him but ah, he had, okay he had well, some anyway. moments having to share Okay, he's here. But I think so, the podcast, like she talks about repeating little accidents. And like you were saying, there's an overlap between science and, and art. And yeah, so yeah, if you're somebody yeah. who's also bumping into those edges or thinking about serendipity or thinking about, you know, what value does any of this add? This is a great podcast for you. She also talks about the value, like the two different brains. And did she call it the prime? What? She said there's a small brain, a big brain and a small brain. Yeah, or the old brain and the new brain, if you you know if okay. you will. But yeah, you have sort of the, uh, or sometimes some people call it you're a lizard brain, you know. Ah, just, that's the lizard brain. Okay. Yeah, that's the old part of the brain, which kind of uh, it kind of is is it's kind of the way she described it is where you kind of things become sort of automated almost like you don't even you don't think about it it's just like you know you're yeah kind of, okay. you know you kind of re, re, you kind of re, it's repetitive actions mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to think about it anymore and mm -hmm. so it's uh, you know there's a bit of thinking fast thinking slow element to it you know if you have to mm -hmm. read the book this idea that certain things are just kind of embedded into your system and you don't think about it and you just do it and and other things you have to kind of step back a little bit and go like wait a minute you know uh, what am i doing or can i change yeah. that and if you want to change that kind of the, the those repetitive things that are kind of you know kind of that are wired so the way your brain is wired we call, you know you can also call it that way if you want to change that it takes an effort it takes quite an effort to change that to go like i want to kind of break that habit i want to try break that thing that i gonna you know, keep doing automatically you know this automated kind of responses to certain things or actions i do and that takes an effort and and sort of so that's also what she talks about right this frustration when she does something that seems like it was planned or it was already kind of you know, rehearsed or something like she's done that before it's like and that becomes you know something that and i i you know maybe it's more like then it becomes like kitsch or something or sort of like commercial or some you know and she was like no and i need to you know so she needs to break that again mm -hmm. and I, so anyway yeah exciting lots of uh, yeah but it really gave me a lot of food for thought and also how i can use my own lizard brain to help me out <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. My biggest passion is gardening. <laughs> if I had a time, gardening, which is actually growing vegetable, not like a growing flowers or yeah, I love I love it, kind of eating off my ground. <laughs> mm. So yeah, so I I love most of my decision making choice I make is based on how coexists with nature 
so um, yeah that's who I am and um, yeah and also I, I'm an artist but I'm not really as uh, eccentric as people think <laughs> <laughs> people, people say this artist equal selfish horrible like eccentric bunch of people but my, I think we are just a craftsman maker but a bunch of maker so I hope I'm not as nasty as people think <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting way of thinking about artists I don't think I've ever thought about them yeah I mean there are, are eccentric artists obviously uh, my grandfather was a professional artist a painter and he was he was quite eccentric, really. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't that grounded, to be quite honest, especially later in life. I mean, it takes a little bit of eccentricity in, immense, in, in the sense of, you know, the, the extent, in, to the extent that if you are a little bit eccentric, it means that you are a little bit removed from the sort of the ordinary. So you are a little bit, you stre you know, you're stretching a little bit what is, you know, what other people think is normal behavior and being an artist I think itself is a little bit you're a bit a little bit of an outlier in that sense because for for in this you know from for 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 normal people <laughs> between brackets yeah. normal people I don't know what that means by the way but you know and we had a lot of conversation about that Morgan and I also in previous episodes about you know, when when do you call yourself an artist? And for other people, you, you're saying something that you're like, oh, that's something very specific, special. But mm. so so if you say, well, I'm not really that eccentric, and and I'm I like to be grounded, and I like gardening and, and that. So I mean, when when do you start calling yourself an artist? When mm. when is the moment you go like, I'm an artist? Because I and when is that? Is that what when you were a kid or? Yeah. I was, according to my mother, I was a artist since when I was born. Oh, really? I often di dis disappear and and in the field and the dig in the ground. Like there is a lots of photographic evidence. It's like a scruffy head girl squatting with nappy, <laughs> digging the ground with shovel. <laughs> And then just just since then, I think I love this kind of sort of minor repetitive action, create this, like, for example, for me, that was a big hole you make and then put yourself inside. <laughs> and then my mom was madly looking for me, apparently, one day. Where are you? And I was sleeping in the hole <laughs> inside <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yes, it, it kind of, so... Yeah, it's a really interesting topic, isn't it? Who, when you decide to call artist, and then I, lots of philosophers and everybody mentioned before, everyone is an artist, really, isn't it? But this sounds so horrible, but practical reason I called myself first time was probably when I start selling my work. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's a good, that's a really good point. Just right? from a real artist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds horrible, but it's like lots of people put commercial artists. Like a, I did experience, experience that. I was do, doing artist, artist residency in Liverpool and then I haven't made any money then. And then Chelsea Cross Fair in 2001, first time ever I exhibited. And then I start selling from that point. And then kind of all of a sudden, boom. Then making my life through setting my work was a quite incredible feeling. But the before that and after that, I, my stance to making is never changed. But people in the canting, I remember in the, there was the argument by tutors and me and another stuff. Then start calling me, pointing, you, were, you became a commercial artist. And then... Hang on a minute. What is the? You sounded really negative there, <laughs> and then I did not like that. And then so, but that is a kind of slap in my face. And then I trying to be never make like a aesthetic or artistic decision by commercial reason. I never done that in my life. So because of the early stage, kind of this kind of weird definition of a commercial or non-commercial artists I have an issue to be mm. cold in a negative way but 
I think many, many successful artists quite incredibly hardworking. It's not necessary. Selling mm. well doesn't mean making just come you know that's calculate back from profit margin and you know it's not yeah. like that so so w- what you're saying is that if you are in the negative sense of the word commercial artist mm. that means that you the, the the reason why you make a certain piece of art is because you know it's going to sell well so mm. basically you are looking at what people want to buy and you kind of adopt your art to the market basically you say ah mm. this might sell so i'm going to create this piece of art because not because it comes from your heart or your mm. soul it's not mm. because of you but it's because you, is that what it, what you mean and so which no, is, no no it's, it's i don't mean anything to be honest people mm. say to me it's more i want to question back to them what did you mean yeah, yeah exactly because i accept any type of artist even granny knits jumper it, all mm. the, the artists included it's like uh there's no need to sort of uh, which one is a higher or lower or right. non-commercial what that is and then the, you know that there's just so many you know decision making involved but artistic sort of decision is uh, can't, has to come first to me but mm. that that's uh, that's me but you know it's so okay Lots of people, like for the sake of argument, people quite casually mention these things. It's actually quite, mm, have you double think about that? I know, you know? And yeah, so like I've been told before, I don't know why they started this conversation quite negatively, <laughs> sorry. But <laughs> that was quite horrible one was I've been told, like you are a commodity of rich people. I've been told that once. Oh. And then I was like, oh, hang on a minute. I... My work being collected by many not non rich. How do you define rich anyway? But many, many various financial status people, like when I selling at craft fair, I remember this uh, teacher from kindergarten bought my wall hanging. I nearly kind of felt, wow, you know, people work hard and then earn money, and then people spend that money to to buy my work it's yeah. a kind of exchange of labor and it's almost mm. exchange of love so i just found it very important that yeah. I, should, yeah. I always remember that hmm. yeah i mean it, but it, but it is amazing i can imagine that if you create something because as an artist you create something out of nothing you know there's at one point there's nothing you create something something is there and then someone buys that you know and they earn money with their labor and they they spend money on something that you created out of nothing right and and a lot of i mean like authors uh, you know storytellers uh, you know there's there's yeah. you know you know that it, it's it's a common thing but but in a way that's such a such a i don't know to me it's a, always such a beautiful thing that you go like oh, i i i came up with this thing and then mm-hmm. someone really appreciates it is like you said i like that exchange of love kind of uh, mm-hmm. you know that that's that that's really what it is because especially when it's art i mean it, it might be depending a little bit on what what the art is but it, it's not a it's not a practical thing it's not something oh now i buy this thing from you and with that thing i can now whatever fix my car or something or make mm-hmm. dinner no it's you you know you you it's something that creates it's like in a way it's for instance i always have to think about this when when i'm thinking about music for instance it's also like this magical thing it creates is it's not there it's it's like you can't even see it you can't smell it it's like but a bit same with art you look at it and it does something to you and it resonates with you and it and it and it sparks this emotion and that's such an amazing thing and even though maybe you didn't even meant it in a certain way but some people will see it and say oh that really touches me in this way so i don't know i think that's such an amazing way of doing it that's i think why people find art and artists also somewhat not maybe so eccentric is not the right word but 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 there are some mystical qualities to it because Mm. it is a bit of a mystery really why a certain piece of art kind of does create this emotional response yeah I totally agree. That's kind of one of the topics I'm really 
want to pursue for coming 10 years. You know, if you visit a historical place and then obviously old temples in Japan and the, the, the statue, these things, is uh, people loved it. People touched, that's why kept like a treasure. And then museum is full of that because people are like, whoa, what, they, what are, are they? You know, so that's a kind of representation of, uh, you know, the curiosity and again, love. It's inc incredible emotional feeling. Like uh, when I go to museum, I got this kind of surge of energy from past people, like, oh my gosh, people loved it. And it kept so well to survive thousands of thousands of years. Someone mm. made this little pot for nothing, from nothing. And then, but, you know, it's incredible, isn't it? Like a human created this culture, created from nothing, then that became super valuable and I wanted to exchange with it just yeah. just beyond sheer survival like I yeah. created some sort of joyfulness out of it it's unbelievable yeah and that's something that people yeah well to me is that that's such an amazing kind of concept really that you can mm. come we can create something out of nothing and that creates meaning and I mm. have to kind of I always so when I actually when, when you can in a way, I don't know. I mean, I don't know any animals that can do it, right? So I, I, for now, less. But we are discovering more about animals, by the way, every mm. day. That mm. there's they they have, there's lots more going on than we think. But anyway, mm. but this idea that people can imagine something, and and create something out of nothing that didn't really exist. So there's this. You know, I always use this picture of a statue uh, that was discovered, and it's like a, I don't know. 30,000 years old, I don't know how, very, very old uh, statue with a, it's a person with a lion's head. And this, and they don't know what it means because it's so old so that there's no, they don't have any stories about what this statue means. So the people who created it didn't have any written language or anything. So they don't know what it means. But the thing that it stri strikes you mostly, if you think about it, is that somehow they created something that didn't exist and and I know just it's like, yeah, sure. But it's really amazing because it creates, for instance, you could argue, you know, things like countries, things like uh, companies, things, they also don't exist, really. It's all in our head. We, mm. can, we, we make it up and then we say, and we maybe we write it down in what we call a contract, which is not a real thing, really. It's just that we agree on that and we say, okay, and we, and then it creates meaning. And and it exists, but it doesn't really. It's all in our heads, and we we agree that it exists. And that's so such a so the, the the world of imagination and reality is so blended in that sense that we 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 imagine things, we agree it's true, we write it down, or we kind of you know make it turn it into something tangible, and then we say yes, and then we start organizing accordingly. Now with art, to me, so you know. It's, it's this thing that is even more, I don't know, abstract in that sense, because it's just, it just, sometimes it just hits you. So there's a piece of art and all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's really beautiful. And someone just created it out of nothing. And, and I don't know why something, or like music, I don't know why I like certain music. It mm. is probably cultural. It's how you grew up. It's, I don't know what, why we like that. I don't understand why it resonates, because log logically, it makes no sense. So mm. I, I love that kind of that space of not knowing and just experiencing it, and and but but being able to say, hey, because it's not real. I mean, in in the, in the very um, logical sense of the word, because it's like it's not it's an abstract thought, but we but but we created it and we cre it creates meaning that you know i don't know as artists I, to i don't know i'm rambling a little bit but because i would try to kind of grasp this thing that is so <laughs> fluid and so vague and so mystical that mm. i don't i don't know what, what it's do really interesting yeah I, i've been listening to this podcast a japanese two middle-aged women ranting and all sorts of things but they got corner. I love it. This is, and then people listeners just kind of sort of light it in the things they love, why they love. Like a, 
one of the lady was talking about ting. He she collect ting, like a tin box of uh, ah, biscuits, but without yeah. without without biscuits in it. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> well, she can't she can't throw away. And then that love he's she's talking about why she loves it. And then these things yeah. like every single person has this crazy obsession. I absolutely like that because <laughs> it's. Because in, if you listen news and stuff, it's all horrible, just horrible. I, yeah. I never listen news anymore because the life mm. is too short to listening. And then my friend said, it's like, uh, oh, like uh, you're so ignorant. But OK, if you're listening, this disaster from, you know, kind of <laughs> abroad. And then what can you do? You know, certain big disasters like a tsunami and stuff, I donate and stuff, but money is little. You just send the money, so what? But, At that yeah. level. And so, but this kind of crazy things about what in a daily basis, just the live life thinking, oh, I love my life. Or, wow, this tomato is so good. Or, <laughs> like that. Yeah, exactly. if you calumniate this kind of tiny, happiness every day yeah. is so more important to focus on really yeah, yeah, yeah 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 exactly so maybe maybe that's what where i'm trying to kind of feel my way around this like there's these big things like to your point right you you know mm -hmm. life's too short to 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 follow the news because it's all horrible and and you mm -hmm. start losing your faith in humankind if you if you start you know so it's such a horrible thing if you follow the news. But people are horrible in general, by the way. They have been forever, I think. Because I disagree just, with that. But yeah, anyway, I know, I know, I know. I'm just let me go. <laughs> let me let me let me let me run with this. So I know. So so. But but my point was that. So I was struck with the, your story about you know, just this lady, and she loves. The, she collects these tins, and 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 so so the, the you know we and that level of life, the little things in life. You know mm -hmm. the things you really obsessed about, the little things you you love to do, that your gardening, uh, um, uh, you know, family, friends, a little little you know that little things, your neighborhood, the things that you care about, your your home, your you know the things that are really really the most important things. Mm -hmm. That on that level, we are all the same. People mm -hmm. are all the same. Mm -hmm. there, you know you you know there are. I know there are evil people around. I know I'm, I'm pretty sure, but. Most people are not. Most yeah. people are good people. So they Majority. are, yeah, yeah, on uh, that level, right? On that level, they are. They are all the same. They can. They can all kind of, you know, they they all need uh, love and attention and 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 be part of a community and 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 they all want to be respected and they all want to want to be want want to be liked, et cetera, et cetera. And sure, mm. there are evil people, but so, I, mm. yeah. Anyway, so I think I think to me. Maybe one of the things that art does is mm. is this it's an equalizer. Maybe that's what I'm trying to kind of get around. It's sort of to the, it's that to me, you know, you art is something that kind of you know, yes, it can be politic political too, for sure. Mm. But but I I think like music is a connector. It doesn't you know. If, if once it starts becoming politic pol political is weird, but in mm. general, it's not. It's a, it's a, it's something that connects, and it's something that, whatever mm. whoever you are, you know, you can you can enjoy the same music or the same kind of pieces works of art, or mm. uh, you know, it's it, so I, I think there's a there's a, there's a role for art in the world that we often forget. There's a there's a there's a task for artists, and there's a role for artists, and it's important for society. And when I look at my country, for instance, you know, the year after year we get in governments that really don't care about art too much so they will cut you uh, mean holland yeah because they they Come will cut on. subsidies oh, really? yeah for sure yeah because you know we have all these subsidies for artists because it's difficult to make a living out of it so so a lot of theaters a lot mm. of you know ballet uh, music uh, you know that are an art you know whatever artists there are, are ways of getting funds from government but they're always cutting these first when everything, when anything needs to be cut, it's artists first because they don't really create any value for, 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 for society, and you know, economical, yeah. Which is which is not well, yeah. But that's so short sighted. 
right? Yeah, belly. Yeah. Sorry, Morgan, I'm rambling a bit. Morgan, <laughs> you have to help me. Sorry, I'm, this is such a big topic. And I'm like, I'm Come on, sorry. Morgan. <laughs> okay, help, okay. Help me, help me, Morgan. And, but I'm also, but thinking back, because it is, it is in a way like a great, you know, like a great equalizer. And so, of course, it's a shame that the government's cut this thing because they've shown that there's a lot of value to having beauty around. It just maybe takes longer to see that or, you know, see the financial impact of that. But if you go back to these like little things, like that she really has, you know, the, a bunch of tins, tin boxes that she really loves and th that's her thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Have there been things I can see, of course, people watching the, listening to the podcast can't see, but I can see you have plants in behind you. Yes. Have there... <laughs> oh God. Sorry, messy. Yeah. But, but have, have there been things in your life that you found have always been the little things like that thematically keep showing up to you in your life? Yeah. So I just have the picture of you now, of course, somebody who's living because yeah it, it was kind of really great since when I was little I could entertain myself with a tiny dandelion for hours looking at it dismantling it counting the petal I could entertain by any little things anytime so boredom I always believe in it my classmate he was karate master in back in Tokyo time is that uh, where you were raised sorry is Tokyo where you were raised I, you know, Yokohama, oh, it's okay. a kind of, yeah, south. And then my boss parents is from Southern Ireland, Kumamoto, Nagasaki, it's a Kyushu Island, but they are baby boomer generation. So they move back, uh, move to near Tokyo, Yokohama is a southern, a south? Yes, yeah, so just south of Tokyo. But if you look at the map, it's crap, looks like a carry on. It's massive, massive uh, houses and buildings. And then, yeah, so kind of semi yes, how do you call it? Suburb in a way. But to get to the center of Tokyo is an hour on a train. It's not that far. But full of nature, you know, famous uh, Akira Kurosawa used to have a studio behind the hill. So they, I saw when I was little, they were, he was shooting. It's called Dream. It's amazing. People shooting film in the woods. And then when I was a little, I was like, who the hell is that? And then I didn't realize that was a mega famous Akira Kurosawa. Yeah, very weird. But anyway, so in very lucky childhood. And then, you know, sounded by lots of uh, vegetable growers. And then my boss, grandparents, a uh, grandmother influenced me so much to kind of joy of growing as well so yeah so it, I think it's a kind of so what one of my friends in university we all used often you know that students we often discuss philosophically blah 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 and then he always thought saying like a do you think what what's the most scary things for people and then it's not death is it kind of because it's definitely 100% happened to us anyway have to accept but what is it? And then, yeah, we, we're talking about boredom quite a lot at that time. Like, if we, we are never bored, probably we don't need art or music. If we just say, if human never bored, we just doesn't create. We just, so boredom can be quite a good en energy source to create something. So then I met somebody, a Japanese painter in Dublin, in an island and the she, it was raining like three days in a row horrible and I said like why did you so she was in Papua New Guinea or something before that doing artist residence and then if I were you I would stick with that option <laughs> and why you this living in ended up you know settling Dublin and she said Junko we don't need art in paradise she said yeah. And then I was like, oh, what do you mean by that? Because it, you create art because it's because someone like her, it's just hard, you know, obviously there's a great artist in Papua New Guinea, I'm sure. But she was creating incredible painting there. Just the energy, you can tell, I'm bored. Food is horrible. This is like late 90s, by the way. Food is horrible here. And I just have to create something, otherwise I'm going mad, she said. I was like, oh, 
that's interesting. So, but anyway, it's kind of, you know, then kind of culture kicks in, isn't it? Like, you know, I'm, I'm living in the UK last, what, 25 years now. And that's quite a long period, more than half of my life I'm in here. But it was a shock in the beginning. Japan is an incredible country. I didn't know Japan had so much culture and then entertainment. Food is incredible. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I miss that. And then here UK, it's like in the 90s, like seriously was bad. And I could not believe it in the quality of food like a food it's better to go to caribbean soup uh, like a caribbean outdoor market to get the fresh stuff and uh, yeah it's ridiculous and then now it got really to like 10 times better than ever but it's really interesting like a what well, boredom driven people to cre- adjust adapt create something to get on <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. It's kind I, of think, went... I really love the quote, you don't need art in paradise. Yeah, I, I, I was question. It's not me, though. This artist said that. And then, but it's stuck in my head a lot. It's not necessarily true, but it's kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, but think I, think it, I think it hits at something that is true, right? Because. A bit, yeah. The, that kindergarten teacher bought your piece because mm. it struck something in her. Yeah. And probably something that at that point, I don't know whatever emotion it impact it, it hit in her, but it was mm. probably something that she didn't have an abundance of. You know, yeah, it was probably it probably hit something that she was feeling that she could use a little more of. Yeah, it's like a, obviously it's not deliberately. This is the thing weird, like an emotional sort of response. If you pass you as an artist, like I want to make someone cry, how do I create this art to make people <laughs> cry? And then it's. It's kind of impossible, but I have made a few people cry in front of my work. It's like a local police, uh, not policeman, postman that he were here. He was like, oh, what, what are you doing? Like, oh, come in, come in, have a look. And then he was like, really? Like, Jesus, I've never seen anything like this. And then what is it? What represents? To be honest, I'm not sure. <laughs> and then it's kind of representation of repetition and then pattern it's create and then growth of a yeah. like labor energy kind of thing. And he was like, I don't know why I'm crying. And he did cry. And then oh, yeah, yeah. quite a few local farmer, one farmer came in and did that too. It's like, it's a it's crazy compliment. Crazy. You know, I don't know yeah. how... I received this, but I get similar reaction to if I go to ancient objects like uh, Assyrian art, I absolutely obsess in a British museum. And it's a city called Nara, it's the oldest city in Japan from seventh century. And then stuff like that, I absolutely adore to visit. And they make me cry, literally cry. And then I often have a, like a Vatican, you know, the amazing marble sculpture river. Have you been? It's yeah. um, insane, mm-hmm. absolutely insane. I got scary spiritual spine, spine tingling throughout, <laughs> stuff like that. And I'm sure it's impossible to intentionally create these moments but somehow my practice has kind of a little bit it had a reach that what couple of times to make someone's hurt emotion touched which is a incredible moment yeah well and also i can imagine that for your you know with the work you you do mm. you're not all you're not always there to see it happen so you know, for instance, so I've I've done I've done theater and I've done play music, and then you're in front of an audience, and then you you kind of perform whatever you know your art right there, and people kind of you know they experience whatever is your art right there, and that magic moment happens then. But if you mm-hmm. create something that 
people can actually take home <laughs> right? mm. or, or, or it's in a gallery and you're not there to see their response. So I can imagine that if you are there, like your, 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 your experience with the mailman who comes in and then, you know, you see the response people have. So there must, I mean, there must be, there are probably lots of people who have those experience, mm -hmm. you know, those emotions, but you don't always see it. Isn't that something you would kind of, when, would you like to be fly on the wall and that sometimes you go like, how do <laughs> I don't know. But How they the, interact with your with your art and is oh you yeah, you're not always there? So it's like I'm doing workshop and stuff. And mm -hmm. then I do lots of workshop with the local kids and then this uh, like a tiny cup of metal making things and then showing if you polish with a brass or good old, you know, the so a polishing liquid. You know, brass um brass is uh, like a abrasive you can just polish the brass or copper mm -hmm. silver thing and make it really quite shiny but you have to rub it more you do you get like a sparkly shine and then this kind of share in the moment with kids these kids just whoa mm -hmm. this kind of, whoa right. it's material like a craft so i yeah. i'm in the kind of craft sector i don't yeah. know how they find that but material science at the end of the day yeah it, to be honest everything cooking is as well isn't it in a way but anyway so if you see the tangible mm. moment and to share that and then you'd get this genuine reaction it's yeah. nice very nice to so be you, you said i wanted to talk about your art so i wanted to go and go back to something you said earlier uh, right in the beginning of our conversation when you were still a child you, you talked about this minor rep repetitive actions something you yes. said as a as a so because i think that's essential to your work right so it's it's this that that idea of minor rep repetitive actions what can you explain a little bit about that because and also because you you talked about that you know already discovering that as a as a child mm. or uh, somehow can you, can you explain a little bit about what that means to you yeah, so since when I was little, uh, the the beginning of obsession was microscope. And then he, I used to, so Santa Claus gave it to my brother, but my brother didn't bother, so I kind of stole the gadget. <laughs> and then I used to go and collect gooey green pond water. Dirtier the better, because you, there's so many things is growing there. So I put in a little dot, you know, the green water to the slide and then I have a look and then it, it just all sort of stuff in there and then I start doodling drawing quite a lot through that and then I was about 10 11 something like that then one more one day I'm not sure it was kind of sort of dividing or hatch egg is hatching something like that and then that moment I was witnessing it it's like whoa it's then you know that there was the Ebola virus pandemic was on in Africa then and then you see this fearful image on the news and then this uh, tiny sort of virus like a <laughs> propagating destroying the human <laughs> being yeah these, these and corona things the same thing isn't it just very fearful image but uh, when I it witnessed was through the microscope was uh, this <clears throat> tiny vulnerable creature is it try to survive and then propagating then in my head like this set of division is happening wow imagine that it's taking all over the universe <laughs> and then randomly creating this shape so my doodle began drawing started just a pattern like a circle 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 so <laughs> then when you stop three minutes there's a kind of some sort of outline isn't it that kind of outline is totally London if you are intended to fill the circle so filling the pattern in the shape is uh, different so lots of people call my work it's uh, decorative but it's actually opposite it's, it's not I don't have any shape to decorate on so unit itself is just forming the shape because I mm -hmm. don't pre-design the work at all well, yeah, so, you do because I read something about um, repeating little accidents, which <laughs> kind of re really resonated with me. Kind of, yeah. so you know, the 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 making happens. You know, it's not that you plan everything in, in advance. That's mm. the way I kind of read it. 
but while creating it, things happen. And then, you know, it, it kind of, and I, and it made me think of an artist and I, I forgot her name, but she, but had really resonated with me as well is that she, she's a painter, but oh, I forgot her name, but she said, I, I you know, I'm, I start painting and I let the paint, it will tell me you mm. know, what, what will come out. I, I'm, I'm basically, I'm carving out what already exists. But I'm just I'm just looking for it, and it just it, it will appear somehow. But I'm not going to th- plan it in advance. But mm-hmm. I really like your repeating repeating little accidents, such a so it's a wonderful way. But so can you talk a little bit a little bit about that? Yeah. So so that's exactly what I pursue. Like for example, it's bizarre. Like a hu- human hands just kind of often record the ac- action. And ended up really too robotic and too repetitive, and creating the grit of a pattern on on the work. And then, oh no, that's kind of my oh no moment. It's like a, that's too like AI I did it. It's like I hate it. And then I kind of sort of kind of decide to flip upside down. So sometimes this accident is created. It's bizarre. Some accident is actually looks like it's so intended. Then this intended area, I hate the most. <laughs> and mm-hmm. even if it's accident or not. And then, so it's vice versa. Sometimes like a creating like a, oh no, it's too, where are they going? And then yeah. I don't, I can't yeah. control now. And then, so there's a, always two or three pieces is a halfway through my piece and then sit in the corner of the studio and waiting to revisit and then just overgrown certain corner and then I don't know what to do now (laughs) so it's kind of battle with accident and incident conscious and conscious so revisiting everything but what I want to praise is that kind of sort of working process always is that accident or you no know, people hate this word mutation it's a bit like that and then because we kind of evolve as a creature you know human adapting the situations and it people call it it's mutation according to darwin but it, it really aligns with the emergence as well it's kind of yeah i think that's also a good word for this yeah yeah it is then it's a yeah Imagine, yeah, it's really yeah. interesting. So imagine, it's just that, in a way, I could say it's naturally emerge, happen organically. Mm-hmm. You could say that, but even if you grow in vegetable, you know the order of nature as well. There's a rule that certain bulb growing certain surrounding. So sometimes I help adapt the working process to create the situation to let my components grow nicely too so it's a really oh really- man there's so many so many so i work a lot in innovation and i work with creative teams and so so you know for me the way i what you're saying i it resonates in that sense that if i work with teams i talk about a creating a safe space for mm. people making mistakes and because that's how you learn and that's how you create serendipity and how things emerge that otherwise you would never have come up with. You have to create sort of the, 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 the context for it to happen. You need to create that space. Mm-hmm. So you will help it. You will kind of help it. So it can emerge and otherwise it would not have. So you might, you kind of, so that's kind of the, the, so, so my, my philosophy is, so you know, first of all, I always considered myself as an artist too, by the way, but this, but I think there's a blend between these, the, um, so there, all the human activities that are there in, in coming up with solutions and trying to kind of go through life and fixing things and, and just going through uh, are all basically the same. We are doing the same things, except that in exactly what you were saying, that if you become to if you if, if if you be if you do something over and over again your hands become trained so for instance you know i, I like i said I, I also play music so if i play piano the worst thing that happens is that i play the same things 
And I need to break through that. And I have to make some mistakes because then they will go like, oh, I discover new spaces and new, new, new things. But it's so safe to keep sort of in that same space where they save. I know how to play it. So mm -hmm. like with innovation and business, we know how to do things. We stay, we keep in that space that we know, we're familiar with. And, we, and everything else is scary because it takes courage to kind of go like, no, it's not right. I no, it's this is this looks like it's intended or it's so there's this this looking for these edges or or just going like no it, it should kind of be a little bit edgy it should be i'm looking for the, the 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 i need to break through these rules that i set for myself and so, so i think all human activity around trying to kind of develop new things and finding solutions to things are basically also in science it's it's the same thing in a laboratory, you have to make mistakes. You have to prototype. You have to try. You have trials. You need trial and error to come up with new things. If mm -hmm. it, if otherwise, you will never come up with new medicine. Otherwise, you never come up with new solutions, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, to me, so hearing you talk about it from the angle of art and as an artist and how you kind of develop your art, it's sim it's so similar to all the other things that we're doing, except you know except your input is different. So you you create something that would create art because you create that context, but within the context of healthcare, for instance, you know, mm. we want to create new medicine, but we need the same mindset. These repetitive actions and, like you said, repeating little accidents. Mm. Yeah, we have to keep on question existing rule, constitution, everything, because we change and then, the, so it's a really interesting point. Like uh, I was chatting with this, uh, what's it called, scientist professor in the University of Sheffield. He developed painkiller, apparently the biggest commercial successful subject, painkiller development. Anyway, and then he, he he said in the laboratory what they do, and he hired lots of artists workshop for students. And then oh, why? And then then we kind of came across this kind of accident things. So scientists often set a target, like assumption. So this chemical should work. Then they test uh, five different test tubes in a different environment, different so humidity, different temperature, different in a different set solution, stuff like that. And then set it and then see the, you know, one or two works according to what they pre presumed. And then, but often the biggest, the huge kind of ex the best moment is actually accident. They said, so one or two test tube come out like a why this virus reacted to this, yeah. and we didn't even yeah. think that. So I think it's a very similar. So we are like a, in the public, like a, yeah, yeah, like it's so similar, aren't we? Like I love, we love accident. Yeah. So it's kind of thing. It's it's accident is a wrong word, isn't it? Like, uh, mm. oh, I don't know, happening, gift. Can we say that? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> An artist I know here in the Netherlands, he always talks about happy accidents. Yeah, um, exactly. That's, yeah, that's from Bob Ross. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah oh, exactly. lovely. Yeah, Bob Ross is saying like happy. He was creating happy accidents. Yeah. And uh, so you know, just try something out, and then oh, what's that? That serendipity. So I think it's serendipity is the serendipity means you know to me that you you're 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 actually accidentally doing something, but you recognize it as mm. as having value or potentially having value. Most yeah. innovations, and specifically also in healthcare, you know, most innovations come from ha happy accidents, like someone. Mm forgetting to you know store something properly or someone who's kind of you know i mean there's so many i mean most innovations you know happen because someone forgot something or you know forgot to switch off something else or and then they go like oh i made a mistake what's that and then oh. what the problem is now a days i think and it's been for a while and you know it's also here in in the, the Netherlands, although it might <laughs> surprise you, <laughs> but we we also tend. But I think in a lot of the, it's a capitalist kind of a way of thinking. Is that 
you need to kind of know what the outcome is before you start something. So yeah. you, because you need to know if I'm going to put money into something, what is my return on my investment? So a lot of the research, for instance, also is based on, we, you, you can only do research on these things and because we want to have that outcome. But if you, in your research, while doing your research and your experiments, you, you, you discover something different, which has, it's something completely different. You don't get any funding for it because that's not the intention of the research. So they kill all these happy accidents, basically, which mm. actually is the worst thing to do because that's where all our main yeah. breakthroughs come from. Mm. And this is also, and you know, if we want to kind of talk to, you know, we don't have to talk about AI or anything, but but one thing that we are, I always say, you know, what's so unique about people is that we 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 are also stupid. You know, mm -hmm. one thing, we are dumb. <laughs> we make mistakes. We drop things. We go like, oops, you know, oh, yeah. what happened? A computer does never, they don't make mistakes. They don't mm -hmm. go like, oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, what's that? That's really interesting. That mm -hmm. That's not a computer. A computer is programmed to do something and they'll do that perfectly, mm -hmm. right? The way it's yeah. programmed. Humans are dumb. We're stupid. We make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, we say weird things. We have surprise meetings. We drop, we, we drop something on the floor. We forget to turn off the oven, you know, whatever. And that allows us to come up with, things that we would never consider mm. we never thought about right mm. and I yeah think i think it's yeah we definitely train to do so i think but i'm sure ai scientists is already reached the level to create the mistake i'm sure they are discussing that it's scary but anyway and then i just it's a it's a that's totally different point but the point topic but i think it, again i kind of follow this amazing is it marcus gabriel i can't remember german economic philosopher he's a really interesting one he always talking about sustainable capitalism like it's sustainable sounds like a oh, being an environmentalist and ecologist it's not just that he's saying like uh how how we can invest money into like a more long-term thing and then Adding to what he achieved, what he's thinking. As an artist, I always thought, like, can we not have just kind of contingency things? Like, if they can make, like, a 20% of profit in that budget, can we not just have a 20% on top of that creative budget? No, not creative, mutation, I don't know, accident budget. And this is the investment to, like, a 10%. <laughs> it's like, a, create this it's a big company, for example. I don't know whichever that is, company. Just create this twenty percent budget to to work uh, to make a bit of mistake and being whatever interesting thing. Yeah, and, they do. They do that. I mean, they try. Yeah, don't they? Yeah. yeah. But they. But they. But then they they allow that to happen for a while, and mm. they then and then they feel it's so scary that they that they that they kill it again because we have all these innovation labs and and now it's like mm. oh you know we don't. You know, because it's not a direct money maker. Because every because we 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 have learned, we've taught ourselves, and we, we we teach kids that we start at school, especially business school, that in order to have a successful business, you have to grow continuously forever mm. and ever and ever, which is not possible. Yeah, who said right? that? Yeah, yeah. Like, no. Can we not stop and then just uh, stop being fearful, and the fear definitely stop the progress, and then. That's exactly happening. People's psyche. It's like a, you know, you news and everything selling fearful story, and then people's minds are completely frozen at the moment. People, decision maker especially, and then let's cut the creative side of it because it's most risk taking. It's not bombing other countries. The most risk taking things ever. So it's. I think it's the most important thing is teach children to be not to be fearful and. You know, then this creative side of decision making is the only can sustain the future. I really believe in that. So yeah. I, I really, really, hopefully, I live in a, such a tiny countryside in Wales. What I'm doing is very insignificant, I'm sure. But we have to teach children just to enjoy every single moment of life, like just that sandwich you're eating, <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> so that you, it's tasty, but can we improve even more? And then like that bread is uh, not that nice, isn't it? Shall we try and bake something tomorrow? Anyway, I just don't know. It's a, a tweaking every single moment. I that I got two children. The kids are amazing, aren't they? It's just a really shame to tell him fearful story to make them like a you're not allowed to make a mistake. That's what the education do. You exactly. this yeah. 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 It's yeah. yeah, that's I'm promoting completely opposite. So I storm into the school like a, let's do drawing. And then like, what should I draw? And it, this is the thing, it's very key. I always say like whatever. Then I got time, you know, the people scared to do whatever. So yeah. ready, steady, I got three minutes, ready, steady, go. And everyone's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But ev everyone got this under the pressure, three minutes. And then put, I put loud jungle noise, like a monkey. <laughs> because it, people, people scared the sirens as well. So if we, I put the music or noise in the workshop, it works best. And then three minutes, off you go. And the, people do. Just yeah. Do, do, yeah, they do. Well, yeah. Then, yeah, then I stop and then, oh my, whatever, that's amazing. Uh, you know, I set, kind of point out as artists, like, that. what is, wow, that's well done. Well, because that's, otherwise you start thinking too much. In, uh, to, to, to give that's quite my, That's my dog, by the way. Okay. Is he okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the mailman, the mailman. <laughs> hang on I, i'm gonna sure and i'm yeah. trying and i'm thinking and because i also because i teach at a university level and we also see the exact same things they want to be told exactly what to do and exactly how to do it and i'm like that's not exciting for me that's also not exciting for you mm. um, so I, really I totally agree so how to create this moment isn't it like a jump of the cliff, that, exactly that. It's like a, literally, I'm living right next to the sea, and it's very cold Irish sea, by the way. It's not nothing gorgeous. It is gorgeous actually, by the way. And then, so, so if you were standing on the cliff, it's only like a three meter. But if you're standing on the cliff, it's like <gasps> then you jump in the water. You know, the kids response it's amazingly actually everybody has a different fear fear level but my son that time was eight. Oh my god all the other bunch was like come on and then a good 20 minutes but he did it in and about oh. that the, yeah 20 minutes can you be that patient but all the other kids did me and my husband was like I just bug off <laughs> and when I noticed like oh he jumped damn it we missed the moment <laughs> And then, yeah, that's interesting things like um, how sort of be patient to see that everybody responds in a natural way. And if somehow we, in the modern society, we've been kind of rushed, like a push, to, like a let's make a decision, bring the re result within this mm -hmm. minute kind of thing. And then, but can we use that module to create the accident? It's like a three minutes make accident. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. what you're doing is, you know, we, you know, you stop people from thinking if they don't have any time, because, you know, your brain really wants to kind of um, yeah. do things right. right. Your brain tries to kind of predict things. So it's trying to predict mm -hmm. yeah. how to act, how to survive the next situation. What are the rules? What's the game? So yeah. it, that's all your brain is doing, <laughs> trying to predict what's going to happen and then and then follow the whatever rules or patterns it recognizes if you say do this and you have no time <laughs> you know yeah. you're like, oh, first is panic <laughs> yeah, and then so and then you see other people do it as well you go like oh, okay i'll just do something right so it's not just one off so three minutes then the five minutes and you know, pause in between mm -hmm. five then ten minutes and then the yeah. this oh, drawing yeah. session is delayed to six people a group of six a4, A3 paper next to each other. So, and then every 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, you swap, rotate mm -hmm. the paper. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you have to draw something on someone's drawing, <laughs> invade them, but or alter or change or enhance whatever they want to do. And then the, the result is always incredible. 
and then like I always accidental and the kids loves it and then it just kind of I wanted to break the boundary it's like there's no answer just things answer how about they enjoy the process and then you know this workshop came up when I was in Australia knowing and so researching about Aboriginal drawing and then they they never sort of had um like a artist doing one art before now nowadays they do but there was like a one big painting the seven sisters kind of called created and you can tell this dot is a person then another dot is another person you can tell the character but Uh. created ginormous like four meter by four meter ridiculously big and then it was stunning like a seven characters in the one piece so that's kind of triggered me to de- design this workshop and then uh, I want to film this actually properly one day because it's actually quite exciting not ex- so exciting especially adult is a really interesting one to do it it's like uh, everyone like approaching each other sorry <laughs> it's yeah I love it yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a, it's fun. Sometimes I do that in here, lunch break in the summer outside and stuff. Here we go. Let's do it again. Having coffee together. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a quite interesting sort of things. Yeah, practice, I suppose. Yeah, and I think and one of the things because you're talking about the the kids' reactions mm. versus the adult reactions, and I can imagine it's the same exercise, but it must be so different. But I think mm. the things I really, really love about children is they're so curious mm. about everything. And they're also less filtered. So they're going to give you their more honest reaction, of course. Yes, um, definitely. Yeah, um, I think it, that's also the case. And also, yeah, what's it called? The amazing artist. I always forget his name. Transvestite, not transvestite. How, 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 ah, transgender? Artist ceramicist British. I'm not. I'm not familiar on uh, ceramicists, unfortunately. Oh, sorry. Anyway, he he always said that like when we decide to sort of uh, like uh, when you dis when we stop calling ourselves child, like uh, why we have to be adult basically when we start stop being child. And then, yeah, it's interesting. So I always, as an artist, I never tried to sort of uh, forget that, just uh, digging ground, can entertain myself. And then, yeah, it's a, it's just a simple task like this. So lots lots of it I collect weed, weed in the, not, not not the dodgy term, but they call some yeah garden weeds. Is yeah, right? weeds. Yes. Yeah, dand- dandelions and then all the bardocks and then you know horse tail. And then but you so every single like beginning towards the end, birds, everything, is all a different shape. So I press plants a lot and then I research the shape constantly. There's no such a thing for them in my life, but you have to train that curiosity to keep going. If you have very healthy childhood, I'm sure you can maintain this quite easily. But some kids, you know, never came across this type of entertainment. Would have been very difficult to rewind that. Mm-hmm. So, Especially yeah. Now, nowadays, I think, uh, sorry, if I look at my kids, for instance, I mean, there's, you know, there's there's entertainment everywhere because they have their phones, you know, and there's there, there's no moment of boredom. There's mm-hmm. no... And if they are, that's really, they get really annoyed, you know, yeah. if they're being bored. My God, they're so annoyed by that. And I, go, and I can't explain it to them. I go like, that's how, you know, it's actually healthy to be bored because, you know, you have your brain needs time to process your brain needs to, to kind of, you see, we'll see other things. Otherwise mm. you're kind of, you just keep going, going, going from one YouTube video to the next, to the whatever game, to whatever I think, you know, kids nowadays compared to, I mean, I mean, I think other generation, my generation, for instance, we, I mean, we would be outside way more than, than a lot of kids nowadays. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a big challenge. The boredom, 
you know, it sounds like a very negative thing, doing nothing, just to, just doing nothing, you know, mm -hmm. mind, mind wandering, just, or just enjoying being outside or just, mm -hmm. you know, observing something or just, you know, just mm -hmm. being, being, being in, 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 in the moment. That's really difficult for, for this new generations, I think. Yeah, definitely. Or oh, even adults as well, I think. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah. yeah, I think it, we 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 live in a very remote countryside, so it's actually quite easy to switch off and then just walk or s s swimming in the sea. Easy to do that. But yeah, and also it's very addic addictive substance, isn't it? And well, you, need, you need to, you need to be able to, uh, I mean, I mean, before we started the recording, we talked a little bit about this, right? The, the, the movement walking, for instance, just to go, you know, moving movements does something to you, does something to your brain, uh, mm. does something to to kind of help you focus on other things or see other things or kind of mm. be aware of other things. I think, you know, I think that notion of, you know, if you want to stay healthy, you know, you you know, you have to stay keep moving. I think yeah. a, a gardening, for instance, is also something that uh, is really important. I was watching it, so I don't know if you seen that. That was, it. by the way, yeah, that, that's actually it was. It's a Netflix series, and I haven't watched all of them, but it was about the blue zones. So mm -hmm. people were, you know, this among this these areas where people become very old. They go over, you know, they all mm -hmm. are all, all uh, you know, they, they they live to be over a hundred years old, and so there's specific areas, uh, regions uh, in the world where there's lots of these people, and there was one in Japan, and I so you know. I, 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 my brain is never good in remembering details, but but the, but the one thing. So there's this series on tele, on, on Netflix where they, sort of they visit sort of these kind of communities, and there was one community in Japan where, that had a lot of elderly people uh, over a hundred. And what they noticed was, uh, so they thought it would be the, like the food, you know, but actually also comparing it to other other communities, is that they were. The people in that community, and I think it was an island, they... Okinawa. Of, yeah, Okinawa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So they did a lot of gardening. Mm -hmm. So they were... So you saw like people 80 years old, 90 years old, gardening, meaning bending down, picking things up, you know, lifting things up, you know, walking, moving, and community. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. you know, a very tight-knit community. People need to take care of each other, mm -hmm. but also the movement. And so... The, the there was one episode the other episode they went to i think it was sardinia so so, mm -hmm. so in, in italy a town in italy where, with a lot of elderly people and it was really funny because you thought why would they all because they didn't have the same food they were actually eating a lot of pastas and so that didn't really fit with uh, the idea of of the the food you should eat if you want to grow old so why are they getting so old and then you saw this image of this 90 year old person going to church walking up the mountain oh <laughs> like, interesting oh wait a minute they are walking up and down the mountain all the time and community so again, a yeah. very tight knit, small community, people taking care of each other, being part of a community, no one being alone, no loneliness or hardly, mm. and and moving and moving, walking up a mountain or gardening or so it's it's that sense of you know uh, and I and I and I just there we as in the Netherlands we it turns out it was just in the newspapers here. Uh, it turns out that we are the record holders of sitting down the most. We oh, are, really? Yes, the Dutch are sitting down the most. Oh, I thought they were a other, cycler. Yeah, but, well, apparently. But you're still sitting down on a cycle, technically. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that counts. I don't know. No, I don't think so. No, it's just sitting in a chair. Oh, I really? have the so record. Sad. We are, right. Yes, right. And that is very unhealthy because yeah. sitting... Sitting itself is unhealthy. What uh, mm. he says while sitting yeah, for a long too. time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but but walk. No, but it is. If I'm on the phone, for instance, I walk. By the way, so you know. Good, I, I, yeah. I, right. Anyway, but the point is that we forget that you know we don't organize. School is sitting. School yeah. is sitting. You know, work is sitting. Yeah. You know, we forget that for we can organize these things differently. Yeah. yeah, so this is actually, I kind of, I did that dissertation in back in 1999 in Camberwell, 
So I done BA in Tokyo, then moved to Camberwell, London, to study another BA because I couldn't afford it doing MA. But then Japan is more to do with the finished object artwork to be assessed every term. And then, but London was completely opposite. Like, Junko, stop making things, research, and then do test piece and do drawing and then show a sketchbook and then do this, you know, this uh, write 3000 word essay. And then, oh my God, really? And then, why do you make things? And then, why, why, why? Everything have to explain verbally. And I was, oh, but by, the, by then I was already obsessed with the repetition and the making spiky objects then already, but I never sort of uh, be in a position to justify my action. <laughs> so mm. how can I go back to workshop to make my tutor s- stop saying, to say stop working? So then I start researching this uh, neuroscience, basically repetition. So they, we have two brains, like a big brain and small brain. And a small brain is uh, called in the, under my neck, under the neck, basically, got like un- we call it ancient, ancient brain, apparently. But so the big brains kind of sort of uh, deal with the information daily basis, like visuals and then reading stuff and then communication and stuff like that. But small brain is a kind of sort of a deal with the motor action. Like, so for example, if you're learning stuff in the beginning, piano or guitar or hammering anything it's actually you use the big frontal brain a lot because you have to sort out the information receiving like a driving car as well but once you practice repeat that same action on and on and on you actually stop thinking don't you and you can do it like you can cycle without thinking you can drive without thinking so but the beginning is like gentle gear but in this stuff like that, and then but then the, the piano, the thumb is there, you know. The, then the small finger is there. But the once you practice, you don't think. So why is it because there's a shortcut? The neuron create the shortcut like a motorway to go to the ancient brain, the small brain. Then so small brain is very super active when you're doing sports or something action you have already learned. So then when, when I was reading this I, in the King's College in London, I was like, whoa, this is it. I can just do it. So basically I had a panic attack because I was overworking and then there was mm-hmm. an article about dementia, panic attack and depression, all these, uh, what's it called? Mental illness is mm-hmm. frontal big brain's illness. So small brain is totally functional, but big brain is completely new neuron gone. It's like over flooding information, give up. Then we get panic attack and stuff. And then, so I was suffering that. And then I realized, oh, interesting. So small brain is okay. Then when I banging metal, like thousands of components, I feel good. I feel like a fine. And then as soon as I researching and doing really quite complicated thing and sitting down most of the day, I panic more. And then, yeah. so this is a link. Then I start this, so the research began and then wrote this 3,000, no, 7,000 actually, word essay about like a brain of makers titled. And then basically how maker artists use brain to sort of, uh, practice so sports science has lots of evidence obviously musician musician saying the very similar things basically once you memorize the action you're not using the frontal brain because so that's the uh, you know the um, you mentioned before it's about kind of mundane boring repetitive action is actually only moment you can empty your frontal brain so if you're sleeping, your mm-hmm. brain is actually quite active. Yeah, but, yeah. but if you pass on the task to small brain, which is when you're doing sports or something activity you already have learned, 
mm-hmm. your frontal brain is actually quite released from the task you're dealing with other information. So relaxing. It's bizarre, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense how brain works. So therefore, lots of people say, oh, I need to computer work whole day. I need a glass of wine sitting and watching, binge watching TV series. Your brain is super mega tired. You go into bed, you're still tired because your brain's super active. So when on the moment we can relax, big brain, mundane, repetitive action. That's answer to me. Yeah. Well, it's a, like a, it's meditation, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. And and yeah. For, so I, I for me, yeah, to your point exactly. When I when I play music, for instance, for me, mm. you know, if I'm you know, if I'm just not trying to come up with new stuff and just just play mm. piano, for instance. To me, that's a moment of relaxation. I don't have to think about it. it yeah, just, I know. It just flows. It's mm. nice, isn't it? Like a chopping carrot, weeding, yeah. polishing bath. These so, such activity, there's a meaning for human. That's why I've been really promoting this kind of notion of repetition. It's not beyond boredom, really. It's actually... It's the only way to relax us. Yeah. So people stop thinking. I want people to stop like the notion of relaxing. It's not yeah. watching film. It's not mm. watching some what's it called? Go for a walk and with friends or just lined like maybe stretching the beach or even domestic task. Cooking is brilliant. Weeding in with hand cleaning is brilliant apparently for frontal brain. So if there is a such a thing, mundane domestic activity, has it really good for better than eating avocado every day, basically. If you think about that, I think people would scrub bath more often. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, seriously, I really believe in it. And then, so it's not just cleaning, like more, for example, like massaging your partner's shoulder each often like a lot of japanese family do and Mm -hmm. stuff like that i think it's so meaningful and gorgeous you know you get you know teach children how to do that too and you get massage shoulder massage on that one (laughs) i I get punched in the end and i get you know (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think Um. it yeah, that's kind of my mission, I suppose. Then that was in the middle of my panic attack, and then the dissertation, and then I got, I said the tutor said, yeah, back to studio, fair enough, <laughs> and then back in the forging. Since I kind of physically experimenting, that kind of really quite aware, conscious how I my body react and why mm-hmm. I get this tight chest. I don't know you guys experience hyperventilation, but yes. once you have you yeah. once you experience that, you it never go. It always there. And then oh it's coming, it's coming, I can sense it. Then you have to stretch or do something else. Then okay, I'm okay, I can go back. But whether you admit, admit that on you know, it's okay as well. Like uh, sorry, I'm just a little bit panicking. Can I stop this lecture or something? I I've done twice in the past, actually. But everyone's so nice. This yeah. planet is full of nice people. Most of all, they say, like, oh, okay, let's have a five minutes break, everybody. And then everyone, like, making lots, chatting each other next to each other, like a gesture, isn't it, of kindness. Everyone was like, oh, Junko's panicking. Okay, let's make funny noise and then just try not to make her pressure. We are waiting. That I felt that, oh, so kind, everybody. It was in Adelaide in Australia. There was, oh. and then, uh, and then I was like, "Oh, okay." I had a bloody tasty coffee, like three cup in the morning. That's the problem, probably. <laughs> and then <laughs> back to talking. Then I was fine. And then, so I, I, I really think just how we, how brain works. It, we are, if we are really aware, we can sort of deal with the mental illness or daily hardship and stuff better i think we need to know this mechanism so i my kids 13 years old teenager obviously smartphone smartphone and then (laughs) 
and then but these things you know we limit the time to our max and stuff like that daily basis and then you know then after that we already discussed like how do you feel you know if you're being two hours solid in the screen and then she he already already knows yes feel really busy and dizzy and then feel really really want to shout or really frustrated and then mm. I go oh that's interesting and then, okay can you just scrub that dirty potato with me and then he's like all right and then he does it and then, so <laughs> we kind of as a parent we have to give task to do mm-hmm. it sort of elates that like a frustration from scream I think yeah I, I really yeah I believe in I'm, I'm not that strict with the screen things but I think I, I feel like I have to be most yeah properly like how we coexist with screen error yeah. because we yeah. can't deny it like a, like a we are sitting look at the screen and communicating that's the reality but after this maybe I go back bang metro you guys going for walk with dog I don't know but I think <laughs> we have to balance it obviously isn't it we have to coexist yeah. with technology yeah. with AI with exactly. gardening <laughs> everything yeah yeah exactly they uh, new generations like like all of us not just a new generation all of us we need to kind of uh, coexist, yeah. coexist and and know how to because it's not going to go anywhere so how no. do we make it so it fits and it and, and and it doesn't and it makes things better and not worse i think that's yeah. Fantastic. So I, I have a, so because, because of time, I, I need to kind of uh, ask you yeah. uh, some final questions and my, my, I really want to understand sort of what, how do you see sort of the future? How do you, what, what if it, for you personally, so what are you, what are you going to be doing the next few years? What's your, what's your, what's your plan? What do you see in the future as an artist, as a person, as a gardener, as a, as a, <laughs> as a mom? Mm. So yeah, I'm 50 in a couple of months. So it as a probably maker, it's probably the most important 10 years ahead, I think, because we practice certain skill and then I got team of uh, five of us in a studio. And then my husband, who is a woodworker, currently in Japan solely, doing <laughs> this presidency, very jealous. And uh, but, so we are a bunch of practitioners here. And then, so for, then he, my husband just built this amazing workshop. So we just kind of moved in after this like a decades of a cold, dumb, horrible studio. I finally got lead in dream studio. So mm-hmm. yes, it's gonna be amazing. I kind of as a team we are expanding some sort of a new idea, and it's all will be all about metal and also we are we probably doing music soon believe or not my agent would hate this but yeah I, we been we collaborated with violinists before and then i collect the metal work sounds hammering sounds and then she composed tune with it and then we loved it so we kind of doing workshop to make music so it's it's a drawing workshop so we're gonna i want to create this tiny peninsula in north wales it's gonna be the tiny sort of (laughs) hub of creativity my husband and i tried to curate this exhibition too bringing local creative bunch included farmer musician poet painter illustrator all sorts to it's a theme of a tree and how to a far fallen tree how we can make something out of it that's kind of soon we ha- want to tackle these things and so you know the lots culture has been city centers kind of sort of uh, things but <laughs> art exists everywhere and i believe in it and then they in this internet era we can all share it even the other side of the planet and then so I think it's a great time to this kind of bunch of a creative in the remote countryside or in the Amazon can we not just to sort of share would love to see amazing new discovery new stuff is popping appear on the grove it would be really interesting so that's kind of I tried to do 
And in terms of method work, I'm going to go more nerdy, <laughs> doing lots <laughs> of research about metal. But metal is unbelievable substance because uh, digital 90, it's hard to define, it's the, the questionable, but 93 to up to 97 out of 113 elements on this planet is metal. Wow. Huge. Metal is a huge subject. And then there's a loads of poisonous and then really opposite, really good for human metal. Volume wise, also metal is uh, huge on this planet. So um, I'm interested in metal is everywhere, if you think about it. In us as well, as a, in yeah. you know, zinc, iron, very important. Some silver, gold is an in us apparently. It coexists. So um, painting as well, pigment. So our, metal is everywhere. So I'm really interested in that metallurgy side of it as well. But core of my practice is still about repetition and then how enhance our daily life is uh, always central. But this uh, scientific sort of research to enhance that practice from different angle is uh, kind of my plan for 10 years, I think. Yeah, is it complicated? <laughs> um, yeah. Also sounds really exciting as well. well thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's because everything is actually stimulated, everything, isn't it? Yeah. Everything's yeah. connected. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, I, I made my first time ever French onion soup. I never done that because I subscribe this uh, vegetable box from local farm. And then mm -hmm. this is winter boxes, is uh, like um, just the roots vegetable. And then they put like a five onion every week. And then how could you consume? five onions a week <laughs> and then so i had i had a 20 onions in the basket so i made that it's delicious <laughs> so tasty and they french onion soup i never thought that and then did you put the cheese on top of it yeah of course oh yes <laughs> baguette and crispy baguette and the two cheese i had to do like a cheddar and parmesan on top mm. of it the glue and then just oh naughty but i loved it so <laughs> yeah just uh, yeah i really cook i love cooking so yeah we in the studio we built the kitchen as well so one of us always cook lunch so we eat together and then mm. so it's nice i i love that and then so we sometimes develop some idea over the meal but usually we chat in stupid thing and then um, about that stupid things, I think it's really the most important thing, the team bonding. And you can tell someone a little bit upset or someone super annoyingly happy <laughs> and stuff like that. It's nice to for company to get on because the repetitive forging can be physically demanding. You know, you need a lot of nutrition and rest in between. But everyone works here is a little bit nerdy in that sense very lucky to find that talent yeah it is talent if we could, quite everyone three of us quite autistic in a way it's kind of <laughs> it's extension of that so but i think it's the best talent we have to be honest in a way to do my work so yeah we'll see <laughs> yeah all right we'll see and we will we will hopefully hear more about you and uh, and your work and what you're doing okay. i really enjoyed the conversation i i will so you know the one thing i will definitely take away is the uh, minor re repet repetitive actions sort of scrubbing the bathtub is really good for health <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I, yes. it's it's yeah. i really really yeah. believe it because it's quite sweaty yeah, think. no, no, totally. Yeah, for and sure. And don't use chemical. That's a cheat, isn't it? Like a, you just spray. I okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. It has you to have hard, to scrub. Hard labor. Hard labor. Hard labor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Don't well, cheat. I thank you so much for yeah. this conversation. Thank you I so really, much, Junko. Yeah, you, yeah. you you made us think and 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 see things through a, a different lens, and oh. that that's that's very very uh, valuable. So thank you so much. So. Sorry, it's not really, is it artistic conversation? I'm not sure how you define this chit chat. But <laughs> hope, hope 
good. I enjoyed it too. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jinka.